in this video i would like to talk briefly about the pfc's probably you will hear a lot in your professional life and pfc is short for power factor correction and although you know there are like many different topologies in different applications today i would like to just give you an purpose of the pfc and give a really basic example uh, but again you know there are like different topologies which are out of the scope of this course so let's have a look at a uh, user case where we have a one phase diode rectifier it's connected with a capacitor and what will be the power factor of that one phase uh, diode rectifier so this is our uh, input voltage ac voltage and this is our you know rectifier stage then we have a c filter so of course you know if you have a current source source ideal current source with an inductor and that kind of things that can draw a constant current uh, from the grid um, even if you draw constant current you know that's a kind of a square wave so it creates lots of harmonics but again it is even worse if you have a c filter here because whenever the voltage is less than your output voltage then you will not draw any current from the grid and whenever it tries to climb over the capacitor voltage then you have short bus bursts of uh, input currents so let's have a look at the waveforms this is your source voltage and this is your capacitor voltage okay so whenever your output voltage the capacitor voltage is you know slowly decaying depending on your load okay so whenever it is less than that one you are not drawing any current so this is your source current and whenever your voltage tries to climb over that capacitor voltage it draws a really short period for the current and that current during that time charges the capacitor so at the end of day okay so at the end of day you have instead of a nice sinusoidal current you have that kind of really peaky you know input currents and you can get the thd so thd will be worse and thd is uh, quite high and you will have a low power factor and if all you know converters are generating that kind of uh, current waveform then you will have uh, some voltage uh, ripple problems in other uh, connections okay and actually nowadays you know we have all the led lights computers and that kind of things if we don't do anything to improve uh, that kind of diode rectifiers we can have problems and actually that you know that doesn't have to be just with the rectifier again like with all the you know flyback converters forward converters so it is like we are getting some dc voltage but where is that uh, dc is obtained so most of the time if you have uh, large voltages you can use a i think it was the same for the apple macbook charger that we discussed a couple of weeks ago so you have in the early stage you have a rectifier so you are using that rectifier so you are using that voltage as an input to whatever converter that you are using so that can be that doesn't have to be just the case with a diode rectifier and resistance that can be used to as an input to any converters that we already discussed so we don't want to draw you know that kind of uh, that kind of output uh, or that kind of input current from the grid so what we can do so we need to use power factor corrections for that one and they are as, as i mentioned they are used in you know computer power supplies led drives arc furnaces in like if you have uh, that kind of irregular current for large applications then that can create even larger problems than a you know conventional uh, computer power supplies or welding i i think that we couldn't see the photos but the uh, you know old styles weldings kind of mechanism you know they use uh, some kind of current transformers to increase the current but in modern ones they use power electronic circuits to reduce the voltage and increase uh, the output cut so you can uh, weld some materials so in that kind of things again you know the input current is kind of really uh, peaky and it is far from the fundamental fundamental 
fundamental frequency of the grid. Okay, so here we will see a simple uh, PFC circuit. So we still have the diode rectifier here. Okay, and this is our you know output. That C is already C, and what we I mean it doesn't have to be just that topology. You know this is one example of a PFC circuit, but I just would like to give the operation so here you can see it is like a boost converter right so we have a switch an inductor and a, another diode so i can control i can control the duty cycle of that thing so if i you know close that switch that will short circuit the inductor and not short circuit but connected to the source voltage so you can create some current or i can turn it off so I can use the inductor current to feed the C. So the idea is I can adjust, okay? The idea is now I can adjust IL. I can connect the controller. Okay. So I can do a controller here and I can, whenever I need more current from the grid, I can close the switch whenever I require less uh, uh, current I can open or turn off uh, that switch okay so the idea is the idea is I can give a reference signal the magnitude can be changed according to your load but this will be your reference current okay so whenever you are below that one whenever you are below that one the switch is on and you you just you draw more current from the grid and whenever you are above that one so s is off so it is a hysteresis on off control so it is like a you know thermostat of your house so you set it to 21 celsius degrees so whenever room temperatures goes above 22 degrees it turns the heater off and whenever it goes below uh, 20 degrees you turn the heater on so your room temperature always you know changes between 20 and 21 degrees so that's the same idea but your reference signal is not a constant value now but you put you know that kind of rectified waveform here okay so you want to draw some kind of rectified current waveform with 50 hertz the grid frequency over here and actually the source current you know becomes yes there's a high frequency ripple but if you filter that out then you will have nice sinusoidal effects okay so that can be you know applied uh, quite nicely and actually you know normally they are run to let me draw it color let's say your gain input voltage so if this is your vs again normally they are run at unity power factor so to coincide with your uh, source voltage but technically it is possible you know by adjusting your switching sequence and your reference signals you can move your current forward or backwards or lagging or leading power factor can also be achieved okay there's also i mean if the load is you know if the load is getting lower and lower then you can get into the critical critical current mode so discontinuous conduction mode so in that mode so you have you know of course here i mean if you're cannot get like negative current because of that diodes and those diodes so it will not be possible if it will not be possible uh, to if those ripples gets below for example if you move that kind of reference waveform then if you just keep the same ripple then it will go below negative but it will not be possible so if your loads get smaller and smaller then you will have that kind of waveform okay 
So this is your, you know, actual uh, inductor current. So this is your uh, source voltage, grid voltage. Okay. So again, you know, if you just follow the average of that thing, you can have nice uh, unity power factor uh, current drawn from the source. So I would like to show like a couple of uh, actual photos. So on the left hand side, you see a circuit uh, with, you know, PFC power factor on correction is off. So as a result, so this is your voltage and this is your current. So these are the peaks. So whenever your input voltage gets larger than your capacitor voltage, you see a high inrush current, then it reduces then your voltage. Uh, level becomes less than capacitor voltage so there's no current same with the negative so you have that kind of ripple waveform not very nice uh, then you turn the pfc on and suddenly again you know the power levels probably the scales are not uh, same i'm not sure but suddenly now you can see i'm drawing nice waveform current waveform from the grid with sinusoidal of course if you zoom in a little bit you will see here let me show here so there's a band so here there's some high frequency uh, current ripples so that kind of you know the uh, thickness of those uh, waves are uh, larger than here so there's uh, that kind of uh, current waveforms in that one but at the end of the day you know if you compare the thds of and the power factor of that one you will see that one is quite advantageous okay there are some also like uh, pfc controllers let's try to have a look at those ones so let's have a look at uh, those data sheets so i just opened uh, one of them and it says programmable frequency continuous conduction mode ccm boost power power factor correction controller okay so it is eight pin solution blah 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 it operates between 18 kilohertz to 250 kilohertz okay so you can connect mosfets and igbts okay so whatever or noise minimization open loop detection blah 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 so you can have a look at you know applications ac input like 100 watts server and desktop power supplies so computer power supplies air conditions refrigerators industrial power supplies so so again uh, it is you know that kind of circuit that they have a physical package so i think it's a soic package so 8 pin it's really a small integrated circuit and let's have a look at the usage so you have the bridge rectifier here okay so you need to connect an external inductor and an external uh, switch and there's another diode so that part is like the boost okay so there's uh, some voltage division circuit so that is getting into sense so you are sensing your output voltage and again there's some uh, current sense and current sense is done you know by using there there's a capacitor for sensing and there's a voltage division circuit here so you are sensing the current and i think that frequencies there's a specific resistance uh, to control the switching frequency with respect to the switch that you have chosen so everything is done by that circuit i don't know let's have a look at there's any specific details thermal information switching frequency again it can be adjusted uh, if you use that kind of uh, resistance then it is operating at 18 kilohertz if you use that kind of resistance then it can operate at 65 kilohertz so uh, let's go this is typical characteristics i don't know if there's anything with inductor size ah, okay there's like uh, there's so that is the block diagram inside the pfc circuit okay so these are the things that i was telling again you know it's not purely 
unipolar or bipolar PWM switching, but inside the, you know, that tiny chip, there's lots of current amplifiers, comparators. So you are generating a triangular wave waveform and it is comparing that one and you are generating some gate signals. The R that you connected is controlling an oscillator. So that is defining your switching frequency so on and so on and this is your current sense this is your v sense is they are connected to some error amplifiers and all of them are coming to comparators so there's some soft starts i don't know if they have like 50 pages of data sheet okay anyway so let's look at then another one uh, that's from toshiba so again this is a critical conduction mode uh, PFC controller IC again it is a tiny package so package with eight pins so it can operate between 10 to 20 volts 25 volts uh, it can throw up to one amp I think it has its own uh, MOSFET inside so you, you don't uh, connect that's what I think but no I think you need to connect some external uh, switch so let's have a look at okay so this is again like inside of your switch okay that's inside of your integrated circuit and there is your switch that you need to connect and this is your inductance uh, diode and they i think use coupled inductors and so on so again it operates in critical uh, conduction mode okay so you can have a look at those uh, data sheets yourself and let's look at the welding circuit so here uh, you see sorry so here you see an application in a welding uh, circuit so let's try to open the larger value so here you see you have the again grid voltage you have the rectifier okay and here you have the pfc stage like inductor uh, switch and a diode so it's working as a boost and then again the output is not directly connected to a resistive circuit but they are uh, connected to full bridge converters actually there are like three in parallel lighting they are working interleaved stages so you generate in a welding circuit you generate a very large current at low voltages so you can uh, generate some uh, enough current for welding so you have like three parallel stages all of them are connected to the same DC link so from the you know full bridge point of view they are connected to a DC supply and they are working as a DC DC converter but all the power is coming from an AC single phase AC so in order to have nice power flow you need to have that kind of PFC circuit and in the PFC circuit you are measuring the currents you are measuring the output voltage and you are also measuring the out, uh, input grid voltage so this is your reference voltage and you want to generate some current in phase with that voltage so that will be unit power factor and you have the current controls pwm generators triangular waveforms comparators and you send on and off signals uh, to that pfc controller okay so again you know pfc is a really wide area there are many different topologies and and different converters but i think it will just give you an idea to start with okay thank you